veneration, and exclamation of adoration. Tassa, him, Bhagavato, unto the fortunate, illustrious, sublimely blessed one. Arahato, unto one who has attained the greatest good. Samma, properly, rightly, thoroughly. Sambuddhasa, the omniscient one. Obeisances unto him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. Iti piso bhagava arahang samma sambuddho. Iti, thus to point out, api, and also, even so, so, he, Bhagava, fortunate, Arahang, worthy of, deserving, Samma, properly, rightly, thoroughly, Sambuddho, enlightened. Thus indeed is he, most fortunate, perfect and worthy of homage, omniscient. Vidja charana sampanno sugato loka vidu. Vidja, art of higher knowledge. Charana, perfection in speech and action. Sampanno, possessing an abundance. Sugato, faring or going well. Happy. Loka vidu, wise and skilled in universal laws. Endowed with clear vision, whose actions are well done and whose words are well spoken, whose path gives abundant happiness, wise in knowledge of universal law. Anuttaro Purisa Dhamma Sarati Sata Deva Manusanam Anuttaro Incomparable Unsurpassed, Purisa, men, Dhammasarati, like a charioteer who tames, Satta, science and art, Deva Manusanam, gods and human beings. Peerless trainer of the untamable, teacher of gods and men. Buddho Bhagavati. Buddho, one who has attained final, complete enlightenment. Bhagavant, fortunate, illustrious, sublimely blessed. Iti, thus. Fully enlightened and showing the path to enlightenment, the supremely blessed one. 
obeisances unto him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. Thus indeed is he, most fortunate, perfect, and worthy of homage, omniscient, endowed with clear vision, whose actions are well done and whose words are well spoken, whose path gives abundant happiness, wise in knowledge of universal law, peerless trainer of the untamable, teacher of gods and men, enlightened and showing the path to enlightenment, the supremely blessed one. Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasse iti piso bhagava aleham samma sambuddho vidya charene sampanno sugato loka vidho Anottero purise dhamme sarati tatta deva manussanam buddho bhagavati Now let's go into a little bit deeper study of these verses. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa sounds like a typical devotional verse beginning with namo, namaha, homage, veneration, an exclamation of adoration. So it's an expression of devotion for sure. Tassa, to him, who? Bhagavata, Bhagavata, unto the fortunate, illustrious, sublimely blessed one. So at first glance, this seems like a devotional outpouring, a typical religious prayer. But if we look deeper into it, we find that it has a deeper level of meaning than might be visible at first glance. Bhagavan, the most fortunate one, is the human being who has attained the highest perfection. In other words, the Buddha is not an ordinary human being. In fact, when he was asked, what are you? He said, I'm not a human being. I'm not a god. I'm not the god. I'm not any kind of other spiritual being. What am I? He says, I'm the Tathagata, one who has gone beyond. And of course, we know the famous verse, gate, gate, paragate, parasamgate, bodhi, swaha. We worship the Buddha not as a god not as someone to have faith in, not as someone who is going to save us, but as an example, as a guide, as an ideal of the perfect personality. And in this way, we can gradually change our being to be similar to the Buddhas. So this is a great science, and more of this science will come out in the succeeding Parita chants. But right now, we want to know who is this person? Who is this Buddha? Well, he's Arahat. Arahat means one who has attained the greatest good. Cessation of all suffering. The cessation of suffering is the aim of the Buddha's method. The Buddha was not teaching a religion. He was teaching a path to the cessation of all suffering. This is the greatest good, the summum bonum, the highest attainment that's possible in human life. So, when the Buddha taught, he taught because he was Sama properly, rightly, or thoroughly enlightened. Some Buddhasa, not just only Buddha, but some Buddha, completely, thoroughly, properly, rightly enlightened. Obeisances unto him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. The Buddha's omniscience spread to the past and future of every living being, every entity in the universe. However, the knowledge that he taught was only that which would help us attain cessation of suffering for ourselves. And he did this in such a way that we would not become dependent upon him. We would not become entangled karmically with him, in contrast to most of the religious and spiritual leaders in the world. 
he attempted to show, to point out the path that he had traveled himself, that leads to the cessation of suffering. And then we are free to take this knowledge and do with it what we will. There is not another personality in all of history who matches these exalted qualities. And for this reason, the Buddha is called Sambuddhasa. He is completely enlightened. He doesn't demand anything of us. He doesn't order us to worship him. The Buddha says, if you want to attain complete remission of suffering, then try this, try that. And he offered, some say, as many as 84,000 different ways or doors to the realization of enlightenment. And he did it like a doctor. He would prescribe a specific method for each person who came to him. The Buddha was not like an ordinary religious teacher, and he certainly wasn't like an ordinary deity who demands us to follow him or demands us to worship him. Instead, he was like a compassionate physician who was able to treat the disease of human suffering because he had conquered it in himself. Now, the next part of Buddha Vandana opens with some words which will be familiar to anyone who has studied Sanskrit or Pali. Iti pi so. Iti api saha. Iti means thus, therefore, but it carries the mood of a presentation of something that has been mentioned before. In other words, behold. Behold what? Api that which has been mentioned already before, the nature of, the suchness of, the present subject matter, which has been established by the previous line, namo, and so on. What or who are we offering our respects to? What are his qualities? What is his nature, his suchness, his being? Api, saha. Saha means unto him. We are talking about the Bhagava, the Bhagavant, the fully enlightened, most fortunate, most developed, most advanced human being. There are nine qualities which are enumerated in the rest of this verse, which are the marks or the specific qualities of the Buddha that spoke to his uniqueness. The first one is Arahang most fortunate, perfect, and worthy of homage. So the Buddha is depicted in the suttas as an arhant in five aspects. One, he has discarded all defilements. Two, he has suppressed all the enemies connected with the eradication of defilements. Three, he destroyed the spokes of the wheel of existence. And we're going to explain the meaning of this in detail in the section on Paticca Samuppada. Four, he is worthy of being given offerings and paid homage. And five, he withheld no secrets in his character or in his teachings. The entire teaching is laid out. The entire teaching is given. Whatever is good for obtaining release has been presented. Nothing has been held back. He withheld no secrets in his character. This is one of the things that makes him an arhant. In fact, he was very open even about his previous lives before he attained enlightenment. Even though the Buddha's life was perfect and his behavior was blameless and spotless and his advice was infallible, he did not hold himself above anyone, nor did he keep secrets or decide who was worthy to learn and who was not. He gave his teaching openly to everyone. He conquered all evil, all defilements, and he removed also the causes of the defilements from his nature. And this enabled him to attain the highest state of purity, which is the requirement for attaining Nibbana, or complete enlightenment. He put an end to all his sufferings, and then he taught others how to attain the same goal. The next quality is Samasambuddho, which we translate as omniscient. But what does it really mean? It means that the Buddha comprehended the existence of the world in its proper perspective. He discovered the Four Noble Truths through his own experience and comprehension. 
Although he was born as a prince with tremendous opulence, denied nothing, he renounced the world, gave up everything, and searched for six years to seek enlightenment. During this time, he approached all the greatest teachers of his day. He tried all their methods, but none of them was good enough to meet his standard. So he even surpassed the attainment of his teachers. And still, he was unsatisfied. So finally, basing his experiential research, his phenomenological investigation on rational understanding of his own experience and treading a middle path between a renunciation and tapasya, means austerities and penances, and enjoyment, he departed from the tradition that had been passed down in Indian society at that time which held that only austerity was the path. He finally found the final solution to the universal problems of unsatisfactoriness, conflict, and disappointment, the law of dependent origination, paticca samupada, the law of cause and effect, or kama. Not only the law of kama, but how that law works in tremendous detail. With this knowledge, he assessed the reality of the world and experienced pure, complete, full enlightenment. The next quality is Vidya Charana Sampanno, endowed with clear vision, whose actions are well done and whose words are well spoken. This means that he was endowed with a perfect vision of right and wrong. He had also exemplary good conduct. This has two significant aspects, indicated as threefold knowledge and eightfold wisdom. The Buddha could recall his past birth and trace back his previous existence as well as that of all others. Second, apart from being able to recount the past, he had the unique foresight of being able to see into the future and visualize the state of the entire universe at any moment. Third, he had deep penetrating knowledge pertaining to attaining arhantship. As far as Eightfold Wisdom, the Buddha was described as having the unique gift of insight, the power of performing supernormal feats, in other words, mystic powers, a divine ear capable of hearing anything at any distance, the power of reading others' thoughts, various other physical powers, the ability to recollect previous births, a divine eye, and exquisite knowledge pertaining to the life of serene holiness. Now, with regard to charana, or good conduct, this aspect is listed as having 15 different categories or types of virtues, which were fully displayed in the life and character of the Buddha. These are restraint in deed and word, restraint in the absorption of sense effects, moderation in the consumption of food, avoidance of excessive sleep, maintenance of crystal clear vision, realization of shame in committing evil, realization of fear in committing evil, thirst for knowledge, energy, mindfulness and understanding, panya and karuna, wisdom and compassion both of which are basic qualities which Karuna gave him the ability to bestow on others. He realized what was good and what was bad for all beings, and through his compassion he showed a perfect example to lead his followers away from the causes of evil and suffering. The greatest virtues of the Buddha enabled him to shower the highest degree of dispensation, blessings to the brotherhood, and sterling qualities to those who chose to dedicate their lives to him. The next quality is Sugato, whose path gives abundant happiness. Sugato means that his path is good, the destination is excellent, and the words and methods used to show the path are harmless and blameless. The Buddha's path to the attainment of bliss is correct and pure, straight, direct, and certain. 
His words are sublime and infallible. Many well-known historians and great scientists have commented that the only religious teaching which has remained unchallenged by science and free thinkers is the word of the Buddha. Well, why is that? Because Buddha's teaching is not based on faith. Rather, it is based on the confidence of being able to duplicate and verify all of the stages of the path independently in your own heart and mind. Anyone who follows the Buddha will find that the happiness derived from his practices begins immediately as soon as you start to do them correctly. Thus, the Buddha is known as Sugato. Next, Lokavidu, wise in knowledge of universal law. The Buddha had exquisite knowledge of the physical world. He had experienced, known, and penetrated into all aspects of worldly life, physical as well as spiritual. He was the first to make the observation that there were thousands of world systems in the universe. He was the first to declare that the world is nothing but conceptual. In other words, it's an artifact of our consciousness. The next quality is Anuttaro Purisadama Sarati, the peerless trainer of the untamable. Anuttaro means matchless, unsurpassed, and Purisadama refers to individuals to whom the gift of the Dhamma is to be given, whereas Sarati means a leader, literally a chariot driver. These three terms taken together imply an incomparable leader capable of bringing wayward men to the path of righteousness. Among those who were persuaded to follow the path of the Dhamma and to shun evil were notorious murders like Angulimala, Alavaka, and Nalagiri. All of them were brought into the fold of the Dhamma, and some even attained sainthood, arahantship, in their lifetime. Next is Sata Deva Manusanam, teacher of gods and men. It is noted that the Devas used in this context, gods, refers to beings who, by their own good karma, have evolved beyond the human stage. The Buddha was a remarkable teacher who was flexible and capable of devising diverse techniques suited to the caliber and mentalities of both devas and human beings. He instructed everyone how to lead a righteous way of life. The Buddha was indeed a universal teacher. Now next are two words, buddho and bhagava. Buddho means one who is enlightened and also shows the path to enlightenment. So as far as we are concerned, the Buddha means Sakyamuni Gotama Buddha. We are following him, although his quality is non-different from all the other Buddhas who ever appeared or will appear. He possessed extraordinary powers of being able to convince others of his great discovery through his exquisite art of teaching others his Dhamma. His teaching techniques were unsurpassed by any other teacher. The term Buddha has its secondary meaning, usually translated as awakened or enlightened, since the ordinary state of man is a perpetual state of stupor. The Buddha was the first to be awakened in our historical time and to shake off this state of sleep, this conditioned consciousness and existence. Subsequently, he convinced others to awaken and to steer clear of the state of lethargic, samsaric sleep or conditioned existence. And finally, the quality Bhagava, the supremely blessed one. Of all the terms used to describe the Buddha, the words Buddha and Bhagava are most popular and commonly used. The Buddha was termed Bhagava or Blessed One because he was the happiest and most fortunate among mankind for having managed to conquer all evils, for expounding the highest Dhamma, and for being endowed with supernormal, superhuman intellectual faculties. Mm -hmm.